So today we're going to give the mic preamp its first test. I've connected up the power supply. And just to make this interesting, I haven't tried this off camera. This is going to be genuinely the first time. So, and the last one didn't work at all. So uh, we'll see what happens. So we've connected the preamp board up to the power supply. I've just connected the, um, the plus minus 15 volt supplies. I haven't bothered to uh, connect the 48 volts for the phantom power. We're not going to uh, test this with a microphone today. We're just going to uh, apply some test signals and see what happens. Now, before we actually apply power, um, what I will do is I'm going to pick up from the, I think from the meter output here. Um, the, the first test that I want to do is just to make sure with nothing on the input, possibly the input shorted, or just make sure that we're getting no DC at the, uh, at the output there. The, um, the problem that I had with the first one of these was that I had mixed up the inverted and non-inverted uh, feedback and so the output slewed all the way to the, to the power rail and the output device got stinking hot and it tried to permanently magnetize the output transformer which wasn't great so that's probably the first failure mode that I'm going to check for apart from smoke obviously I have just briefly checked with an ohm meter between each of the power rails and ground and they look quite sensible so I don't think we're going to get a yeah, spectacular failure, but that doesn't mean it's going to work. So I just connected a couple of clips to the uh, meter output there, I'll run those into the scope input. We've got five volts per division. So the moment of truth, I'm going to apply power to the preamp and just check to see whether that uh, voltage remains around zero or whether it uh, zips off to one power rail or the other and stays there like I did last time. Okay, so there's a shot of the scope screen. We're looking at the, uh, the meter output to the preamp, and I'm about to apply power for the first time. So, and this is, this is real. I haven't actually cheated uh, and had a, a peek beforehand. So here goes nothing. Okay, well, that looks promising. I'll take the power off again. Okay. Very good. Okay, I've just uh, dropped it down to about 200 millivolts per division. I just want to see whether we actually see anything because I was quite happy to uh, not see that slew all the way to the power rail, but um, I'm concerned that nothing's happening at all. So I just want to see if we see anything. There we go. Okay, so it's doing a reasonable job. It's a little bit of DC offset there. Okay. Oh, it looks like something's happening anyway. Very good. Okay, let's turn that off again. And, whoa. <laughs> and there we go. Before we press on any further, I just want to adjust out some of the uh, DC offsets. So our first one, as we uh, have mentioned on the board here, is to adjust R1 for zero volts at test point number two. So I've clipped on to test point number two, another one to ground. Now, what R1 actually does is that adjusts the current through one leg of the differential amplifier. And what we're looking at at test point two is the output of the uh, DC servo, which is trying to keep the, uh, the output uh, uh, DC at zero. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to get the DC servo working as efficiently as possible. We want the maximum amount of, uh, of throw in either direction. So to optimize that, what we'll do is we'll um, try to balance the uh, current on the two sides of the differential amplifier such that we end up requiring basically um, zero volts um, at the output of the DC servo in order to uh, bring that back into balance. Now that'll change slightly with temperature and the prevailing winds or whatever, but uh, basically that's our starting point. So we're just looking at the, uh, the meter display. We've got it set to uh, DC volts. And I'll just uh, power up the preamp. There we go. And that's the extent 
of our voltage offset on the DC server. So the server is doing a bit of work there. I've got uh, nearly a volt there. Let's just tweak that up, see which direction we set. That's getting worse. We'll come the other way. Be brave, give it a bit more. Give it some welly, lad, give it some welly. Okay, that'll do. 10 millivolts, that's near enough for zeros, makes no odds. Okay, press on. Okay, so we've, we've moved on to test point number one. And what we're looking at here is the, uh, the DC offset um, at the primary of the output transformer. So this is something we want to uh, minimize just to uh, reduce the amount of uh, distortion uh, due to uh, saturation of the output transformer and particularly at low frequencies. Um, so we just want to tweak out that last little bit of DC offset. So 75 watt millivolts, not too much anyway, but uh, so that's R39. Let's find him. Go. Okay, that's getting worse. Come back the other way. Okay, it's not too bad. That's less than a millivolt. Well, just about a millivolt of DC offset or so. Uh, that looks very reasonable indeed. So now I think we're going to press on to applying an input signal and having a look at the output on the scope. So here's our test setup now. We're applying a signal to the microphone input here. Uh, we're still picking up the output from the, uh, the meter outputs. Um, I will at some stage pick it up uh, from the actual output stage here, but that'll do for the moment. So we're just applying a one kilohertz sine wave there. We have the uh, input pad enabled and the gain set at minimum. Oh, phantom power switch is on, hence the red LED. There is no 48 volts, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, oh, red LED, cool. Okay. Okay, so that's what we're seeing at the output. Uh, we're applying a signal to the input at around about one volt RMS. And we're getting out around about 600 millivolts RMS. That's with the pad engaged and the gain set to minimum. So somewhere under unity gain. Let's just try tweaking up the gain to see whether... Oh yeah. Okay, well, it's sort of working, isn't it? Very cool, okay. So now we've set it to one volt per division and I'll just crank up the gain a bit more. And that seems to be working quite nicely. Okay, very good. Okay, I've just uh, changed the frequency to about 20 kilohertz and changed our time base to 20 microseconds per division. And that seems to be looking quite nice. I'll just crank the gain up again. There we go. That's looking quite nice. A little bit of, ooh, a little bit of DC unsteadiness there. That's interesting. Don't know what's going on there. Maybe our DC servo is not quite keeping up. Bit of a worry. Anyway, it is a preamp. There we go. Lovely. Okay, so I've just uh, changed the uh, frequency to 20 hertz and change our time base to uh, 10 milliseconds per division. I'm getting these occasional discontinuities in the uh, signal there. Not quite sure what's going on there. A little bit of a cause for concern. Not quite sure that's working as it should. Although. Could it just be a poor connection or something? Oh no, there we go. Yeah, not sure about that at this point. Anyway, 
that's looking promising. Okay, so that's a few tests done in the in the time domain. I think uh, perhaps the thing to do here now would be to uh, connect up the spectrum analyzer and uh, do some uh, frequency domain testing and just uh, plot a response curve and uh, have a look at some of that. Okay, so very quickly, um, we've just uh, changed our setup a little bit. We've just uh, connected the uh, output of the preamp to channel one of the uh, signal analyzer and we've got the source driving the microphone input there. So we'll just uh, power that up and uh, run some tests. Okay, we're just running a, uh, a log um, sine wave sweep. Um, we're um, sweeping from 10 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz and we have uh, the source set to uh, an output of 100 millivolts RMS. So we've uh, disengaged the input pad and we have the uh, preamp gain set to minimum. And we're just watching the uh, trace uh, unfold here. So I have yet to see the uh, high frequency response of this, uh, of this preamp. So uh, remains to be seen. I did run a sweep up to 10K off camera, but uh, once again, this is the first time I'm seeing this. So this should be quite interesting. That's 10k, and that's 20k. So yeah, 1.25 dB per division. And uh, there we go. Okay, there's our roll off. Oh, it's uh, yeah, well, it finally gets there, and uh, it certainly does uh, does roll off relatively steeply once it gets there. But that's yeah, looking very good indeed. Okay, I'm just running another frequency response sweep. Uh, this time. Uh, I've set the preamp gain to maximum and we've adjusted the source output level to 10 millivolts RMS and I've also uh, engaged the 20 dB pad switch in order to uh, get the output level down to something near what it was for the uh, test previously with the uh, preamp gain set to minimum. So just waiting for this one to complete now. I think the previous test I, I, I said that the uh, frequency uh, span was from uh, 10 hertz to 100k but I think that might have actually been from 1 hertz to 100k um, but I've changed that now so I uh, don't really care about the uh, subsonic response. Uh, it's uh, really of no, uh, no import. So just uh, Similar sort of uh, y axis scaling to the uh, previous test. So we have, um, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So we're getting a, a, just a very slight rise um, at the top end. Uh, that's fascinating. There you go. So curious. Wow, okay, interesting stuff. Okay, now finally, it's dropping. Um, once again though, it's, uh, it's not huge when you consider that um, we're dealing with uh, 1.25 dB per division. Um, that ever such a slight peak there is probably of uh, relatively little, little import and that's uh, with the gain up full, it does probably show um, the effects of uh, the roll off of the uh, feedback networks. Um, probably a slight uh, imbalance in the uh, in the feedback there. Um, interesting stuff. Okay, well that uh, probably would do us in uh, in terms of uh, initial testing. I'm fairly uh, pleased actually that uh, it's. Is working. Um, I was uh, half expecting it to be uh, as bad as the previous test, uh, or the uh, previous preamp build, where uh, it all went horribly wrong. Um, but this is looking promising. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching.